Breaking news tonight, Diddy, party, cocktail, cocaine, and horse trank, that's horse tranquilizer. Did he actually feed this to his guests? This, while Sean Combs' mother drops a bombshell. Good evening, I'm Nancy Grace. This is Crime Stories. Thank you for being with us. The biggest secret in the entertainment industry the wall of silence has now been broken. Victims are coming forward. We now represent 120 individuals against Sean Diddy Combs, as well as claims against many other individuals and entities. The names that we're going to name are names that will shock you. We understand that a lot of Hollywood celebrities are shaking in their boots because they know they are going to be named, not by the feds, by the civil lawyer, Busby. And remember this, the prosecutors are held to a certain ethical duty as prosecutors. Civil, the civil arena is a whole nother animal. There is nothing to stop Busby from naming celebs, taking names, and naming them out loud. So we're waiting for the other shoe to drop. This, as we learn, that Diddy's party cocktail, that's certainly putting perfume on the pig. Some people call it the cocktail. Their words, not mine, includes cocaine and horse trank. Listen. Several of the individuals, and when I say several, I mean many, uh, who did in fact seek medical treatment were drug tested and drugs were found in their system, weird drugs, drugs that you probably never heard of. One in particular that, that continues to pop up is a drug called Xylazine, or Trank, which, based on uh, our research, is known as a horse tranquilizer. Horse tranquilizer. If it knocks out a horse, what does it do to a lady? Say, average weight 105 to 125? What does that do to a human being. You heard Tony Busby, the uh, civil lawyer who is getting thousands and thousands of calls on a Didi hotline, refer to xylazine, known as Trank. It's a veterinary tranquilizer. It's found in illicit drugs. And this is what we've learned from speaking to experts. It slows breathing, heart rate, and blood pressure to dangerously low levels. It's very hard to reverse. Overdose reversal meds like Narcan do not reverse the effects of xylazine. In other words, for instance, Prince, when he OD'd on an opiate, possibly fentanyl, Narcan, if he had had it, would have saved his life. If you OD on xylazine, there is not a drug reversal antidote. Joining me in all-star panel to make sense of what we know tonight. But first, straight out to Alex West joining us, uh, investigative and entertainment reporter with The Mirror. Alex, thank you for being with us. Horse trank and cocaine at a party and guests reportedly didn't know that they were being drugged with that. Yeah, we've heard that over and over again in all the, not all, but at least a good part of the civil lawsuits that have come forward so far. We don't yet know um, how many of the 120 that Busby is planning on filing will invo involve those drugs. Um, it's also worth noting that when Diddy was arrested in the hotel room, allegedly there was a pink powder, an unidentified pink powder that was found in his hotel room. Dr. Bethany Marshall joining me, renowned psychoanalyst, joining us out of LA, author of Deal Breaker. You can see her now on Peacock. Bethany, I think twice before I even take a baby aspirin for Pete's sake. It's one thing if you take the drugs, but drugging someone else, especially without their knowledge and using something as volatile as this drug, xylazine, I believe it's called. Well, keep in mind the xylazine, because it's a horse tranquilizer, causes amnesia, what we call antrograde amnesia, meaning that the victim won't remember what happened while they are on that drug. And the cocaine keeps them active enough that they can participate in sex acts outside of their conscious awareness. So this is a very sinister thing to do to people. And then remember, he was taping the victims the whole time. So who would do this? 
a psychopath, a sociopath, somebody who has no regard for, uh, for others, somebody who's a sadist, as we've been talking about, that the infliction of cruelty makes him that he enjoys doing that and putting them in humiliating positions. And then Nancy stalking them after this, because once he tapes them on the xylazine and the cocaine, it appears as if they're voluntarily um, participating in the sex acts so that he, he can use that video against them and stalk them for the rest of their lives. Eric Faddis is joining me, renowned trial lawyer, TV legal analyst, partner at Varner Faddis Elite Legal, former felony prosecutor. Eric, thank you for being with us. We keep hearing about sex attacks on victims, but here, this is a serious aggravated assault. We typically think under the law of aggravated assaults, which in many jurisdictions carry 20 to life behind bars, as shooting somebody with a gun or stabbing them. They live. It's uh, described as putting someone in fear of serious bodily harm, immediate fear. But in this case, it's not a knife. It's not a gun. It's horse trank mixed with cocaine. That's the allegation. That's a whole nother set of felony charges that if this is proven, could nail Diddy. Yeah, Nancy, I mean, the allegations are pretty sinister here. And, and the difference is that they're alleging that it's sexual assault by coercion. So overcoming someone's will. And that's where these drugs come into play. Allegedly, they allowed Diddy to uh, make sure that the victim could not consent, but also could not defend themselves. Really didn't know exactly what was going on, but was present enough to participate in the alleged sex acts. And so, um, yeah, that is the allegation here. And it's, it's certainly problematic for Diddy. Joining me right now, uh, death investigator, professor of forensics at Jackson State University, author of Blood Beneath My Feet, and star of a hit series, Body Bags, with Joseph Scott Morgan. Joe Scott, what is horse trank? I mean, look, if it knocks out a horse, what will it do to a person? Oh, it'll take them down to their knees, Nancy. Uh, Xylazine is specifically what they're referring to in this particular case. Um, and so it's used, it's, it's a non-opiate related uh, substance. So you're not talking about something necessarily like a fentanyl here, uh, or like some kind of synthetic, uh, synthetic opiate. What we're talking about is something that it's expressly meant to use on equines, which are horses, in order to sedate them for surgery. So yeah, it, it can be. And here's another thing with xylene, it can in fact be mixed with fentanyl, and which makes it particularly dangerous. And they're seeing this out on the streets now. So this is something that's been around for a minute, but it is something that the certainly the uh, DEA is aware of. Guys, joining me is death investigator, forensic expert, Joe Scott Morgan. Now joining me, uh, Cheryl McCollum, joining us from the field, um, also forensic expert, host of a hit series, Zone 7, and founder of the Cold Case Research Institute. Cheryl, help me think this through. I, my immediate reaction is you can't prove it to a reasonable doubt, beyond a reasonable doubt, so don't put it in the pot. You know how it ruins a case when you have one weak link, the weak sister in the case? You have to get rid of that. You have to cut it out. But is there a way to prove, to prove it? Not just rumor, not just innuendo, not what 1,000 people say. It doesn't matter because if they don't know what the substance is, clinically, scientifically, look, let me put it like this. Okay. When I try a coke case, okay, mm -hmm. we'd do a bust. There'd be a drug lord. We'd find the false wall, the fake wall. We'd find all the money and the drugs behind the wall. The the dog would find it. Uh, I can't just say, hey, I found a bunch of white powder. Convict him. All the defense would have to do is say, you know what? He hoards baby powder. He didn't can say anything. But if you can't prove what the substance was, you don't have a case. Did you hear what Joe Scott Morgan just said? That Absolutely. the raid on Diddy's home, what if that yielded horse trank. What can we do with that, Cheryl McCollum? There's four things you can weave together. One, 
some of these victims sought medical treatment. Those medical records and the results of that blood work they can get. You've got eyewitnesses at these parties. Perhaps they saw it. Number three, you've got the person that made the purchase. Keep in mind, Denny didn't go out on the street and get cocaine and drink. He didn't. And all these folks that are associated with him that are now under this microscope, they are going to learn whoever talks first gets the deal. Somebody may very well come forward and explain what went down on top of what was seized during these raids. So all four of those things can paint a picture. Oh, Cheryl, 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 Cheryl. I can have 50 cops say, I saw him sell a hit. But if it's not tested at the lab, Cheryl, you still don't have a case, period. I hear what you're saying. Do you know he used it? Yes. Do I believe he used horse drink on victims? Yes. Does Joe Scott? Yes. Did they find it in his mansion? Maybe. Let's just pretend yes. I still can't prove what substance was administered to those partygoers unless they were tested at the hospital and it showed up. Uh, Joe Scott Morgan joining me. I want to follow up. And I appreciate what you said, Cheryl. And yes, I would put it on my board proving guilt, but it's not enough to bring a horse trank case. It's just not enough against Diddy. We have to be realistic. We don't want to ruin the rest of the case. Again, Joe Scott Morgan, I'm talking about horse trank being used on these victims without their knowledge. What about this? A horse trank victim has stated, and I'll only call her Jessica, it eats your skin away and you just have a hole and then it leaves a scar. I know horse trank can cause ulcers, can cause actually like holes in your skin. Why? I mean, look, my first cousin is a horse trainer. Horses are huge. How much do they weigh, Jackie? I mean, hundreds and hundreds of pounds. You know about Google, right? How, what, Liz? Oh, dear Lord in heaven, 2,000 pounds. If that can knock out a horse, what does it do to a person? So why would this trank cause ulcers, cause, as Jessica said, holes in her skin? i got to tell you, I, I have not heard this before, but th I have heard something similar to this. Uh, and I know that covering drug cases, you've, enc you've encountered this with people that use injectables. Um, if they skin pop, for instance, which means they don't go into a vein, they actually go into the sub Q fat and they start to inject this way. You can have ulcerated areas that will appear. So was this drug being administered uh, with a syringe? Because I got to tell you, it doesn't sound like the normal course uh, when you're trying to administer something that is the equivalent of it's, it's serving the same function as a date rate drug. So you would administer it orally. So is she saying that it burned a hole in her mouth? I've had cocaine overdoses before with people pro with chronic cocaine, cocaine problems that died and the septum in the nose would ulcerate and you would have that kind of reaction, but that's over a protracted period of time. This almost sounds like if that's what she, if, if we we're to believe the you statement. You mean like Michael Jackson it, and his nose falling uh, apart? Uh, well, no, I think that that maybe I, I can't speak to that, but I know for a fact I, I've done or participated in, in investigations and autopsies with individuals that had eroded septums as a result of what they were is, snorting. Are you saying the septum is that cartilage the, in the yeah, middle of the your nose? Right, that splits right your nostrils in two, yeah. And so you'll get that ulcerated area there. But many times, you know, because these drugs are cut with things, all right, you don't know what the agent is in there that they're cutting it. And the idea here, right. just so our friends understand, they try to extend the life of the drug that they have. So you don't know what the skin is coming in contact with, Nancy. Well, this is what I know, Joe Scott, um, from the National Institute on Drug Abuse. Xylazine, which is horse trank, which reportedly did his feeding to his guests in order to sex assault them, unbeknownst to them, is associated with skin wounds, open sores, ulcers, and abscesses. Now, while his party victims are suffering 
potential skin wounds, open sores, and abscesses. He's not worried. He's chillaxing with some mango, people. Check it out. With the ocean as your backdrop. I ain't special. I just want it. I want it bad. You feel me? I'm not going to allow myself to not have mango. So I hustle hard. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I don't know if I'm doing my way. No, baby. <laughs> Thanks, Diddy, for that Insta. These people who know who they are should just come forward now. I would imagine, as we speak here, there are a myriad of people who are very nervous. You can't hide skeletons in the closet forever. I would expect there are many people out there right now who are, who are desperately searching their memories as they delete their texts and data. We are learning that his, Tony Busby's, hotline was besieged with 12,000 calls in just 24 hours after our last program. 12,000 calls in 24 hours, less than 24 hours. I wonder if any of those calls were from Hollywood celebrities. Listen. If you were attending one of these parties, if you will, and you attended, attended before or you knew what was going to happen. That is, um, you knew that a particular drug was being used in drinks that was causing people uh, to be coerced and taken advantage of. And you were there in the room or you participated or you watched it happen and didn't say anything or you helped cover it up. Uh, in my view, you have a problem. Yeah. That's to you, celebs in Hollywood. That is Tony Busby, the attorney speaking. And we were given that from our friend Harvey Levin at TMZ. Lynn Shaw joining me, founder, director, Lynn's Warriors, dedicated to ending sexual exploitation. Lynn, 12,000 calls in 24 hours after our last program. Horse trank, cocaine, cocktail. Jump in, Lynn. I don't even know where to start with this, but bring back Dr. Bethany right now because I need a shrink over this dirty ditty. First of all, let's focus on the xylazine. Did anybody, has anybody seen the images coming out of Kensington, Pennsylvania? Because that is what traditionally media shows you. People just flat out in the streets, bend over from the waist, nobody immobilized, nobody moving. Now I know this is a family program, Nancy. However, we are hearing it's injected also mixed with other drugs, rendering people, they can't move. So let's talk about that. And yes, we work with law enforcement here at the Warriors and they tell us this is the biggest thing going on, DEA also, that they don't know what to do about this trank. It makes your skin fall off. We have seen this over and over again. So this dirty ditty doing this to people, but again, we have to stick with the facts. So we've got plenty of facts. We've got 12,000 people that have come forward. We always start with that the warriors believe the victim and then cut it down from there. But 12,000, and last week we heard 3285. And I also wanna focus always on what were uh, purport, reported to be minors at the time and men and boys, we are not putting the focus on that because we at the Warriors think this may just be a whole sex trafficking operation geared towards minors and men. That's what we think. You know, I don't see it. Alex West joining me, uh, investigative and entertainment reporter with The Mirror. I hear what Lynn is saying. At first, I did not accept that there were child victims, alleged child victims. But then when I saw one after the next, after the next, after the next, and so on of allegations about particular child victims and how they were trying to break into the business and they get to know Combs and then they're assaulted. I mean, are they all lying? I find that very difficult to believe. I, I wonder, was it the persona that he projected that makes you think he would not be interested in children. What about it, Alex West? Well, yeah, I mean, one of the things that he did do in terms of getting close to children, he was on Sesame Street, 
So things like that, you have to remember that he was a mentor to people. At no point did it seem like, you know, he would be nefarious towards children, which is why you might be hesitant to believe it. Um, but when you look at the numbers, there are allegedly 25 minors within the 120 that Busby is uh, planning to file. And some of those um, are very particular stories. So there was a nine-year-old um, a part of these these allegations as well. So like you said, we start seeing like a pattern, we start seeing these stories over and over again, and whether or not they're true, I can't speak to. Um, but we have seen that he was a mentor to younger people and that we do know there's Justin Bieber, there's him appearing on Sesame Street, there's so many times of him being around children. Listen to this. In both Adams and Cottom's interviews with the music mogul, PR reps kept a close eye on the interview and always steered the conversations back to Combs' successful business ventures. Cottom says Combs sounded like a child, describing himself as young and sexy despite being a 51-year-old father of six. Cottom says her profile centered around Combs' rebrand to love, which Cottom now calls a psychopath move to get ahead of the allegations he knew were coming. Please join us on our mission to find missing people, especially children, to solve unsolved homicides. If you're on the go, catch us on your favorite podcast app where you can get all of our content where we, in our own way, seek justice. Reports are circulating that a video depicting sex acts between Sean Diddy Combs and a younger male A-list celebrity is being shopped to several outlets. Sources close to the A-lister say it's triggering, resurfacing disturbing memories for the star. Those who have seen the video claim it clearly shows both Combs and the A-lister's faces, and it does not appear the celebrity pictured with Combs realizes they are being recorded. Wow. A celebrity A-lister, a young male, claiming that the Diddy indictments and all the media swirling around those indictments is, quote, triggering him, a young male. This as Sean Combs' mother drops a bombshell, seemingly blaming the feds for her son's allegations and the alleged victims, blaming the feds and the victims, referring to the indictment as a so-called lynching. But first, back to the young male A-list celeb. We keep hearing and seeing Justin Bieber's name and photo attached to Diddy. He is a husband, and a new father. I'm sure he does not want to be attached to Sean Puffy Combs. Listen. Justin Bieber's long relationship with Diddy is being examined under a new light since the disturbing allegations against Sean Combs. Friends close to Bieber say he's finally opening up about his nightmare experience with the mogul and the private hell it's caused him. The pop star says he doesn't want anyone going through what he went through, joining the industry at such a young age, claiming years of therapy and leaning on faith to battle his demons. We have been told that Bieber and his wife have become devout Christians. The last thing he needs is this dredged up and thrown in his face. And I want to be very clear to anyone suggesting that Bieber is somehow the culprit in this scenario, I believe you are sorely mistaken. Bieber was just a boy when he was thrown in the pot with combs to stew. Take a listen to what happened with our friend Jimmy Kimmel Live. He had the Lamborghini for a day or two, and he had <laughs> access to the house, and he knows better than to be talking about the things that he does with Big Brother Puff on national television. Not funny. Okay, that's from Jimmy Kimmel Live. Back to Alex West joining us, investigative and entertainment reporter with The Mirror. I don't like seeing Bieber's picture and name bandied about as if he has done something wrong. Did you see him in that video? He's a little boy. He's just kind of sitting there smiling. And I don't like the implication of he knows better than be talking about things he does with Big Brother Puff on national TV. What, what was going on that this young boy can't talk about? 
I'm curious, Alex. Yeah, it's all really been quite kept quiet even before these allegations came out. I mean, like you said, he was told from the very beginning not to speak about it. There's a video going around as well from when um, Bieber was kind of given his custody was given over to uh, Combs, but not formally, not legally. But he spent those uh, 24, 48 hours with him. And then Justin came out and he has um, songs where he says that people saw him sick and no one really cared. He's very protective of other, especially young women in the industry like Billie Eilish. We don't know what happened in those hours, but we do know it's motivated him to be more protective of other young people in the industry. I'll never forget Alex West um, having a brush with greatness when I was doing Dancing with the Stars and Bieber came one night. No, uh, Nobody could get close to him. He was totally flanked by a, a phalanx of uh, security. And he was in the middle and I glanced over at him, and he was just a little boy. Uh, let's take a look at what Alex is uh, talking about. Watch this. Where we hanging out and what we doing, um, we, we can't really disclose, but um, it's definitely a 15-year-old's dream, and we're going to go full, buck full crazy. We're going crazy. Really? That's from Bieber's YouTube channel. Okay, to you, Lynn Shaw, what does that mean, a 15-year-old's dream? Well, I can only imagine, Nancy, but here's, I have a lot of questions. Where were his parents, number one? Where were all the people around the entourage of this dirty ditty? Where were, where was everybody to protect this little boy? He's only 30 years old now. Listen, I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle of New York City. He used to continually just sell out Madison Square Garden. He was it, and he was preyed upon. He was brought in. But it's not only you know. I don't like him being uh, put in the spotlight like this. We can't help it, right? It's kind of this low hanging fruit, and this is the name being uh, thrown about. But we hear stories of other boys that were brought into Bad Boy Entertainment right up the street from me, the old offices, and part of their audition process was you have to perform. That's the reality. So where was everybody? And I really want to put the whoa, emphasis on. Whoa, whoa, no, whoa, no, whoa, no. whoa, hold on, Lynn Shaw. We got to talk I'm not about having everybody. Justin Bieber's name in the same sentence as with Combs. Okay, just back off. We keep saying no, we don't no, want him dragged no. in. Well, that's dragging him in. But I, I, I don't like it because he clearly has not made a statement. He's just had a new baby. He started a new life, and wouldn't you agree, Lynn Shaw, that if he had been at any of the parties, the freakoffs, he was a child himself. Being at a party would only be victimizing him. That's what I'm talking about, Nancy. I didn't say he had. I said we heard stories of other boys brought into the offices. That was part of the audition process. So I'm saying there were so many people involved in this horrible behavior. But but Justin Bieber was the face, the biggest star, and nobody protected him at these parties. His parents, where was uh, where was Justin Bieber's management, the Scooter Braun that's been running around? Do a little digging deeper on all of these characters that made a lot of money off of Justin Bieber. Where was everybody? Why aren't we hearing more about them, the management team, the PR team, the parents, okay? Other people at these parties. Hold on, because Lynn we Hold on, hold on, hold on. Bethany Marshall, she's right. I have a saying screw you and the horse you rode in on. I don't care about the management and the accountant and the agent. To hand your child over, your child, your boy, to Combs. Now, I know his dearest dream was to break into the industry. I get that. Yes. But handing him over to Combs for even a weekend Nancy, that's similar to pimping this little boy out. I mean, Sean Puffy Combs confesses with every tape, every video, every interview he gives. It's right there. So obviously the mother, <clears throat> I think Justin was raised by a single mother. The mother is seeing these interviews too. Isn't she wondering 
what P. Diddy is referring to? A 15-year-old's dream, things we can't even talk about here. Nancy, what if that were your kids and you heard somebody talking oh. about them like that? I mean, okay, all right. Can you, you even know what? I've imagine? tried my best to stay out of jail, Nancy, I but want don't to say tempt something me. Else that's so important. I want to say something very important. Whoever this celebrity is, whether it's Justin Bieber or anybody else who's terrified of these tapes coming out, it needs to be clear that these are not tapes of this celebrity having sex with P. Diddy. These are tapes of the celebrity being by P. Diddy. I want to defend Justin Bieber's mother. Now, yes, I disagree. I think it was wrong to have Bieber unsupervised with Sean Combs. However, the mom was uneducated in the ways of show business. When you have a big star come on, just like Jackson did, when you have a big star come along, take your child under their wing, say, I'm going to make him a star, Combs was a kingmaker. And we hear tonight that celebrities and others, potential witnesses and victims, are still afraid of his power, even behind bars. Before we come down on Bieber's mother, yeah, you may not agree with it. Was it wrong? Yes. We don't know her thinking. She's not the bad guy in this scenario. The bad guy is whoever took advantage of Bieber and exposed him to freak-offs, if that happened. But don't worry, Tony Busby is not going to hold back. He is calling people by names and outing them. Listen. Because it's in the best interest of the victim, uh, we attempt to resolve these matters without the filing of a public lawsuit. And we have done that already. Uh, we've done that, I would say, you know, with a handful of individuals, uh, many of which you've heard of before, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, that's just the standard process that every lawyer in the United States who handles these types of cases uses because it's, it's, it's the right way to do it. As the question of how many of Sean Combs' friends knew what was going on in the late hours of his parties, an incident at a party nearly 20 years ago is resurfacing. Denzel Washington and his wife Pauletta left a 2003 Diddy party after a shouting match with Combs. It's unclear what started the row, but it ended with Washington screaming, you don't respect anyone, before escorting his wife out. Washington previously commented on Diddy's parties get out half an hour before the devil gets here. Well, it looks like at least one celebrity A-lister, Denzel Washington, stood up to Diddy. Uh, but in the last hours, Sean Combs' mom drops a bombshell seemingly blaming the feds for, for the indictment and the alleged victims. Joining me is Brian Fitzgibbons, Director of Operations USPA Nationwide Security leading a whole fleet of investigators at USPASecurity.com. Brian Fitzgibbons, the last person that will ever give us any evidence about Sean Combs is his mother. You ever tried to get anything out of a mother? I have. It did not go well. We're not going to get anything out of Diddy's mother. Um, we've seen this in numerous cases, interviewing family um, of the the person suspected of committing a crime and we're not going to get anything from her you ever tried to interview a defendant's mom absolutely um you, you see this happen time and time again when the defendant's mother is there blaming the victim um you, you know she's not going to say anything to help investigators she's going to only do things to cover up diddy's actions Brian Fitzgibbons joining us, USPA Nationwide Security. Uh, I had a defendant's mother. They were always on the front row, refusing to believe anything bad about the defendant. And she was set to take the stand for the defendant. When I cross-examined her, I thought she was going to jump on my back and ride me like a chicken around the courtroom. Okay? But I had to do what I had to do. She was a witness. I had to cross her. And I showed no mercy. Of course, I don't want to make somebody's mother cry. But when I'm thinking about, is it her or the innocent victims? You have to make a choice, right? So what's happening and how does that relate to this case? Listen. Let me introduce you to my mom. Call mom Dukes. Hi. 
She's getting a drip with me. She's hydrating. What's up, Ma? Everything's good, baby. I'm here with you. Yeah. I love you. I love you, too. Okay. She come with me to strip club. I don't care. <laughs> Real. She could touch um, the floor with her palms. You know? Flat. Flat. Oh! <laughs> Cheryl McCollum joining me, cold case research investigator, forensic expert. Is he doing an IV drip with his mother? Looks like it. And Nancy, you know, I think some of those 12,000 people are going to say he had things at the mansion like an IV drip. We're going to see it over and over. These videos, the videos are going to be a money tree here. And I just want to say about these videos, this is an old mob tactic. How do you command complete silence and loyalty? You implicate everybody there in the crime. So these people know, hey, if he goes down, I go down. That's a really good point. I can tell you one thing. Nancy. I would not be, uh, whoa, what? Go, jump in. Yeah, I got I to gotta say one thing uh, here about these IV drips. Who in the hell is administering the IV drips? You're telling me that P. Diddy, P. Diddy, knows how to start an IV on somebody. You've got people that are involved, I think probably with at least baseline medical knowledge here. And this goes back to these drugs being administered. How do you get, how do you get your hands on these drugs? How do you know, why, why is it that he would even have IVs in his home to administer these drugs? And that makes this even more insidious here that you have groups of people perhaps are involved in the helping professions the healthcare profession that are facilitating this this activity just on its face is something that is so shocking. Okay, I get where you're coming from uh, regarding the IV drip. I'm talking about him taking his mother to a strip club. Now, uh, let me remind everybody, I am not the church lady. I don't care how many strip clubs you go to. And if your mother goes with you to a strip club, that's not a felony, okay? What I care about are insinuations made by his mother. And yes, I'm talking about you. About the victims in this case. Listen. Diddy's mother, Janice Combs, has broken her silence on the allegations with a lengthy statement slamming the, quote, public lynching of her son. While Combs admits her son is far from perfect and has been less than truthful when it comes to the violent treatment of his ex-girlfriend, Combs claims Diddy is not guilty of the repulsive allegations and the grave charges leveled against him. Janice Combs calls the numerous lawsuits against her son money grabs and the federal indictment a result of his legal team's poor handling of Cassie Ventura's lawsuit. Sean Combs may soon find the symbolic key to the city of Miami Beach won't open any doors. Why? You think Sean Puffy Combs gets a flying fig about the key to the city being taken back? Reneged, that's the least of his worries. Joining me in all-star panel, uh, you know, <laughs> this is very concerning that, look, I don't like attacking anybody's little old mom and the grandma, but uh-uh, N-O to Eric Faddis. The last thing I want to hear is Sean Combs' mother referring to this federal di indictment as a public lynching of her son, what about all the alleged victims? She's trying to be a protective mother here, but but I think it loses sight of the gravity of some of these allegations. Uh, and, and so we have the criminal case and then we also have the civil case. Diddy has these two parallel legal actions that, that, that are set to really cripple his entire empire and, and, and potentially put him behind bars for decades, if not the rest of his life. Um, so his mom is trying to come to his defense. I'm not sure it was the most artful way to do it. Okay, let's just get real about this. Dr. Bethany, I need this in a nutshell. She is blaming the feds, calling the indictment a public lynching of him. And she's also claiming it's all because of Cassie Ventura's lawsuit. Uh-uh, no. She's saying that because the lawsuit was not handled privately, because it went public. Hey, whose fault is that? Who was running down the hotel hallway and nothing but a towel beating the H E double L out of Cassie Ventura? Her son. So you don't like me picking on a grandma? Well, so be it. Bring it on, Janice Combs.
Nancy, let's reframe this entire discussion. This is not a mother protecting her son. This is a mother who potentially acted in concert with her son. We may find out that she committed crimes too, that she may have been in that room. If he took her to strip clubs, what, what's, to, what's to preclude him from uh, bringing her into those scenes, those freak, freak offs? You know how many mother sons are put behind bars because they act out crimes together? And the one thing that we're also oh, not mentioning yes, here. I do. And the last thing I want to hear, Lynn Shaw, is his mother claiming it's all the victim's fault and Cassie Ventura's fault and his legal team's, quote, poor handling of the Ventura case. And it's the Fed's fault and it's a victim's fault. Wake up, mommy. Get your head out of the sand and your butt out of the air. Look at what is happening and be quiet. Any words of wisdom, Lynn Shaw? Yeah, my words of wisdom are, why did Dirty Diddy's mama even say anything? Why doesn't she just keep her mouth shut and disappear? I was wondering a couple, two weeks ago, where is she? She's very quiet. Okay, she's hiding out. Now we hear from her. This is so typical, Nancy, always blaming the victim over and over again. And the burden always falls on us to prove otherwise. Why is this guy and his entourage and all these other accomplices right now being given such slack? We're even hearing well, yesterday. I can tell you this well, much, no. Lynn Shaw. In the light most favorable to the mother in her misguided effort to protect her son, all mothers would try to protect their child. But... The lawyer needs to speak to her and tell her to quit blaming the victim and the yes. feds and the legal team and everybody but her own son. Guys, if you know or think you know anything regarding this case, the case is still being assembled. 888-373-7888. Repeat, 888-373-7888. We stop and remember, Deputy Sheriff Matthew Eugene Yates, Clark County Sheriff's Ohio, shot and killed in the line of duty. Served Clark County 15 years. He leaves behind a distraught wife, Tracy, children, Anthony, Andrew, and Akai. American hero, Deputy Sheriff Matthew Eugene Yates. End of watch. I want to thank our guests for being with us tonight, but especially to you for being with us tonight and every night. Nancy Gray signing off. I'll see you tomorrow night, 6 to 9 o'clock sharp Eastern. And until then, good night, friends. Please join us on our mission to find missing people, especially children, to solve unsolved homicides. If you're on the go, catch us on your favorite podcast app where you can get all of our content where we, in our own way, seek justice.